and welcome. I'm Sudeshna Banerjee, Managing Editor with CFO Collective. After witnessing a huge spike in demand in July, jewelry brands are looking forward to bumper festive sales this year after two years of pandemic that almost wiped out the shine from the yellow metal. While manufacturers are opening new ways to reach out to customers, the industry has been facing major price volatility and growth constraints due to a range of ground level legacy issues and bottlenecks. To understand investment mechanisms and what are the possible opportunities, let's go across to Sanjeev Bhatia, Chief Financial Officer with PC Jewelry. Welcome, Mr. Bhatia, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. First up, what are the constraints and opportunities you perceive? So before we start, I'll just like to speak uh, on the macro level of the jewelry industry as such. So jewelry, as you all know, is a very integral part of Indian psyche and your purchasing habits. So this sector is supposed to be one of the largest consuming sectors of India. I think only after food and apparel, <coughs> jewelry is the third third biggest consumption sector of uh, of indian uh, consumers and as we all know jewelry remains an integral part of our life all at uh, of all our occasions at all over this thing and this characteristic is actually peculiar basically to india and i think china because in western world women do not wear that much jewelry as such but in india the gold and now we are also looking at various aspects of other aspects of jewelry also. That was also a part of your investment. So because you can always resell gold, you can exchange it, you can always reuse it. So it's not only a consumable, it is more of an investment purchase you make. So yes, we have lost a lot in, in the COVID days. But jewelry demand has always been resilient and unlike your hotel or <clears throat> air, air, airplanes where once it goes away, you have lost that demand forever. Here the demand it gets either pre-pound or post -pound. It doesn't get lost. So we are looking forward to the current festive season with great hope and great confidence. So now further on this thing, you also talked about the working capital aspects and volatility of the gold prices. So gold prices have always been volatile. There's no doubt about it. And uh, in Indian scenario, they have all they have been gradually creeping up only. And um, actually, and that's adds what I think it adds to the charm of the gold buying gold in India, because we always remember that uh, when I got married, gold was. 5,000 rupees tola or 10,000 rupees tola or whatever now. Now see it's all 50,000. So we feel very proud and very happy that okay, if I have purchased gold then money is not gone into or is not depreciated or not gone down in value. So that way gold does does remain <clears throat> a good good purchase. But now uh, what, what we are seeing in India is uh, beyond the conventional jewel, wedding jewelry purchase gold or other i like to use the term jewelry is becoming an integral part of your party wear occasional wear your um, gifting because uh, and diamonds have a very large role to play in this thing because in diamonds the variability is higher the looks are better and you uh, unlike uh, what we say, contrary expectations, you do get well, very reasonable price jewelry in diamond also. Obviously, the quality of diamonds would be lower, there's no doubt about it. But you can get a reasonable wearing piece in 15,000, 20,000, or if you can, and it can be a good gift item also. Uh, but for us jewelers, this is actually increasing our working capital. Because initially, we you our main uh, what we say market was wedding jewelry, so you knew what to keep. There was this basically limited range of jewelry which one needed to uh, get it manufactured and uh, 
kept as inventory but now your inventory requirement is increasing no not only bedding but you have to keep uh, for party wear you have to keep for lightweight jewelry you have to keep for many other occasions which in a way market is increasing which is good for us but at the same time your working capital and your other requirements are also affected and uh, as the gold now touches not touches it's cross 50000 per 10 grams so obviously your working capital requirements have nearly doubled in the last 3 years it used to be 25 to 30000 in if i remember correctly in july 2019 so now it is already more than 50000 so for us if we even if we are keeping the same quantity because we as jewelers we measure our uh, what we say in kg we hardly if you ask any of our showroom managers or anyone else so it it will be more he will always say i have i have i hold so many kg of jewelry he will he'll won't know about the actual market your rate as such uh, so even if we can retain the same quantity so working capital requirement so that is one as very important aspect of this business right coming back to the next question sir ethical practice is often seen as a concern for this industry as a finance leader how do you create sustainable and ethical practice both from social and governance point of view the customer is purchasing jewelry he or she is purchasing it a very very long term view point and also with a back backdrop uh, background of investing in that it is not taken as a consumer but more as an investment so for like any other investment you make even if you buy mutual fund or, or if you buy insurance so mis selling or uh, what we say purity of the investment has to be very very important so that can also be i would like to take it as an ethical practice if you are selling something it needs to be backed up by purity so in jewelry industry Uh, purity is very very important and this wasn't the practice even a few years ago it's not a practice even now uh, tanish was the first jeweler actually which branded jeweler which came in this field in 1994 and they and they said ki our 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 name is the purity so people immediately started moving to tanish and uh, now only 19 2020 2021 government made the hallmarking compulsory it's now being spread all over the country slowly uh, it is a very stringent process very very well thought of process right coming back to the next question uh, workforce is an issue when it comes to the jewelry segment yeah as a finance leader how do you, what do you do differently to manage your workforce and engage them and uh, you know enforce them also india is one of the very i think perhaps the only country in the world where you manufacture handmade jewelry and this manufacturing is one of our great arts and heritage i would like to say and every part of the country has its own peculiar uh, method of manufacturing see calcutta jewelry would be different from south indian jewelry would be different from bikaner jewelry would be different from rajkot jewelry and each each aspect like the sarees or apparel now in this field you are getting gi tag and every area is now uh, what we say putting itself like i am i am pachampoli or odia whatever but similarly this variety exists in the field of jewelry also and uh, it's again a very i don't know how this thing it's all bengali kaligars which manufacture jewelry so they are all very skilled labor and people uh, young boys etc there are two types of workers in this thing there are job workers who work on their own and we also have their own we also have in our own factories also so there are two workers two type of workers so for gold jewelry yes gold jewelry you do keep on getting supply of workers because once they know that they are getting job work uh, from here they are being paid well uh, paid well in the, in the market sense i don't think there's any shortage of workers in this thing um the case of diamond jewelry is totally different uh, diamond jewelry is mainly machine made because in case of diamond uh, it's the it's the metal which is uh, which holds the stone together 
and once the metal gets hardened you uh, increase the impurity to 18 karat 19 karat it cannot be worked upon by the hand so in case of diamond jewelry we do employ skilled this thing we have uh, designers then the the design goes to uh, what we say cam then cad then there is a 3, 3d printing which creates that so but again uh, a lot of handwork is involved there also and uh, workers are a very very important aspect you cannot totally what we say automate this industry uh many brands went through a uh, digital transformation during covid post covid they used augmented reality to improve their virtual customer experience what is your view on that actually we were one of the pioneers who started working on this software and technology and also introduced in many of our stores uh but then actual what we have really experienced that remains only a sort of starting point for the jeweler as i said jewelry remains in it's still continues to remain high value purchase and uh, it does require touch and feel before anyone actual purchase is a 2 lakh rupees set or 1 lakh this thing online purchase is mainly for gifting purposes if you are sitting somewhere if if on rakhi or somewhere if you are to give for some friends anniversary or something if you want to send them a 15000 rupees ring or so what i have seen in online the ticket size does remain between 15 to maximum 25 for any any high value item people can browse and have a look at the designs available but for actual purchasing they would still like to come actually pick up the jewelry feel it wear it how it looks and only then they will bring out the money Uh, online is mainly for gifting and for low value items okay coming to a serious question like due to the character of this industry uh, often it is seen that banks and financial institutions have lesser trust in the industry because there is diversion of funds that take place so as a finance leader as somebody who has been in this industry for such a long time how do you maintain trans- transparency and what would be your advice to people who are in this uh, in i mean working in this industry uh, you are raised a very pertinent question um uh, trust uh, deficit does remain to be higher in this industry vis-a-vis any other industry especially for bankers uh even though if you come down to that uh, because damn, no one no one can actually look at the purity or uh, and especially of diamonds where there's there's no external benchmark pricing available right. and every 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 item has a different value addition if i say this is for rupees 1 lakh um, the input cost may be 50000 it may be 75000 it may be 80000 so no one can really have a confidence ki okay if i am looking at the 2 lakh piece because the banker would look at the uh, raw material cost for determining in his uh, this thing there no one can actually have a confidence so i can only say your 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 conduct of the account your uh, what we say your normal current ratio your your debt equity ratio all those financial parameters does do do matter a lot for a banker how 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 good is your software are you able to provide the required information immediately or if you say ki okay i am working on it i don't know uh, in so that's if i can example the sbi yes we set up a special diamond branch in mumbai again i am uh, i am differing because jewelry is different and diamond cutting and polishing is further different if we talk about jewelry yes there are there are trust issues and there are and there have been lot of npas also many 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 jewelers have tried to over leverage or they have just vanished because this is a very easily disposable this thing and there hardly any plant machine is i mean the entire stock is just available can be just uh, put in a bag and anyone can just move out so yes people uh, 
So bankers do ask for for higher collateral in this thing. They ask for for the personal guarantees and other they under, undertake other norms. So for but for any other jeweler, uh, uh, I would just like to say that yes, uh, you have to bring up, uh, build up the confidence yourself in in front of your banker because ultimately he is lending you money. and you have to show how good are you conducting your account how much is your own skin in the game are you willing to provide collateral to the banker so all these aspects need to be you know, done by the person itself because the banker won't come himself and offer you funds unlike many other industries so right. you have to build up your you have to build up your case yourself last but not the least what is your advice to Finance professionals who are planning to join this particular industry. <laughs> uh, this particular thing for for finance actually like working capital, your accounting, all those things remain the same. All those remain, all those things remain the same. The only thing, as I said right in the beginning, is your working capital. Unfortunately, your working capital requirements and your uh, this thing, um, what do we say, funds requirement, keep on varying. very heavily with the movement of commodity which is not in your hand so one day you may be sitting pretty that i have got sufficient funds with me and tomorrow if the gold rate goes up you find ki and uh, in the long run actually it doesn't matter because see what happens if the if you have 25000 worth of gold in your inventory and rate goes up to 30000 you are actually making a profit on that it's only the it's only the time gap because the customer will step back and wait ki okay it's gone up to 30000 he'll wait the price to settle down customers don't like volatility they like the increasing prices but they don't like the volatility in this thing so you need to have sufficient reserves in your company to tide over this temporary deficit and temporary surpluses because now now in shrad your sales will go down suddenly but your cost would your running expenses would not go down so these are the type of uh, seasonal variations when one has to be careful of and uh, try to build up the reserves in advance so that this deficit time they do get filled up later on but uh, they, they but there are continuous variations there is no there is no smooth cash flow for you with that we come to a close thank you for joining us it was wonderful having you with us thank you thank you thank you very much